Wireframing is one of the most essential parts of any UX designer's process. It's where you let your creative juices flow, which could lead to innovation. Also, it's a lot of fun. Many people think that wireframes are just low fidelity paper sketches. However, I believe that wireframe should be more detailed as it is a fast and efficient way of ideating versus jumping into a digital tool. Let's take a look at the five steps in my wireframing process. First, you want to understand the purpose of this wireframe or screen. Essentially, you want to know who is it for, that is, who who is the user and what will they be doing on it. You also want to understand which flow this wireframe is a part of. For instance, is it part of the onboarding flow or the checkout flow and so on. This will give you a general sense of where this wireframe fits within the application. For example, let's say we want to design a to-do list where a user can add and view their to-dos. So the purpose of this wireframe is to help a user be more productive and allow them to easily input their to-dos, review them and eventually mark them as complete. The next step is to make a list of the different user actions you want to allow the user to perform on this screen. Essentially, what are the different things a user can do when they come to the screen? So in our example, here are a few tasks that we want to allow the user when they reach the screen. So first we want to allow the user to create a to-do, then we want to allow them to edit it, maybe even delete it, change the order of the to-dos that they have created. Also we would probably want them to view the completed to-dos and finally we want to allow them to mark an incomplete to-do as complete. Now in the next step we want to make a list of the different components or elements we need to use to design for these user actions. Components include buttons, sliders, text, images, icons etc. which are basically elements elements that are used to design for these user actions. An essential part of the step is to look at inspiration online to see how other designers have solved for this type of screen. There are multiple websites to get inspiration from but here are my current favorites. So all you got to do is search for the screen you're working on and scroll through the results to see what components and elements these other designers have used to design for the screen. This will give you a good idea on how such screens are structured. After getting inspired, you can now start writing down the components for each user action. So let's say in our example, we want to add components for the action of creating a to-do. So we may want to use a button with an icon and maybe some text. And after a user has created a to-do, we probably want to give each task some text, a checkbox, a line separator, and maybe an icon for them to delete it if they choose to do so. Now, once you have all of your elements and components written down, it's time to prioritize them based on their importance. This will help you achieve hierarchy in these elements when you're designing a screen. It will also depend on which are the main user actions on the screen. So in our example, the action of creating a to-do is more important than the action of deleting one. Also, showing the incompleted tasks would be more important than showing the completed ones. So accordingly, you can highlight the main elements for these primary user actions. Finally, you can start sketching your screen. I like to use a pencil and paper. However, you can also use a whiteboard and a marker as well. A pro tip is to refer to the inspiration that you found in the previous steps while you're sketching your wireframe. Okay, so when sketching a wireframe, first you should look at all the components that you have listed here and especially the ones that you have marked important. So this is going to help you establish hierarchy. Uh, however, you should also look at the inspiration that you have saved uh, to see how designers have structured certain components. Now I have two components here called page title and the back button icon because the screen is probably part of a flow that uh, you know will be a series of screens so there should be an option to go back to the previous screen so essentially i will start off by just making a rough sketch of the page title and the back button icon so i would want it to be at the top so the back button icon could be something simple like this and then i could just call this uh, my to do's that could be the title of the page Right, so I have these two components done, so I can just tick them like this. Next is I want to look at the different uh, components here. So let's actually design how a to-do will look after it has been created. So I'm thinking of having a checkbox over here. And then let's write the text of the to-do by groceries. And then maybe I will have a small delete icon. This is supposed to be a dustbin or a trash can, but uh, it, the icon will be here. And then a line separator. Now, what I realized while I was uh, designing this is that there's one more component that I want to add. And that is this icon here, which is basically the sort icon. So, I would want to add it over here 
let me add one more to do so you get an idea a clean room and then the delete icon and then the separator so this is the text component that we have uh, your text for to do and it's important so that is why i have uh, you know made it quite big over here then this is the checkbox the sort icon and then the delete icon right the delete button so i can check this off i can check this off and this off and then text para for long to do's is if the to do is very long right it can then go on to maybe two three lines and then these icons will be positioned like this now a major important component and a user task is to create a to do so it's going to be a button with an icon and some text inside it and i'm going to place it maybe at the bottom of the screen and i'll call it create and i'll add a probably a plus icon right so and maybe it will have like it will definitely have a color so that it stands out so i'm just shading in a color i mean like a shade over here to demonstrate that it will be colored so i want to demonstrate here that the button the create button is more prominent than the delete icon and the delete button right that's why this create is a lot larger than the delete icon so i want to show you the importance of marking your components as you know uh, whether it's important or not so this is a crucial step so the reason uh, why my wireframe looks like this is because i took the time to not only list out the components but also decide which ones are important essentially that this should give you an idea of how you go about creating a wireframe i could probably come up with another design like another iteration of the button for the create so this time it's floating create right instead of it being flat over here and i could probably have the page title be larger if i want so i'd have a different style of icon my to do's however if i do this that means i'm giving a lot of importance to this title whereas here it's not it's not as prominent as this so that really depends on what you have done over here i have not marked it as important so i'll probably go with this design over here but if for a particular reason if my page title was supposed to be important based on you know the purpose of the wireframe and who the user is and what the point of the screen is then this design would be better but most importantly list your components mark them uh, as import like mark them by importance and it will help you establish the hierarchy and size for your screens so i hope this made sense what's important to note is that wireframes don't need to be perfect i would recommend making 2 to 3 variations of the same screen in order to make the user experience faster easier and simpler for the user keep iterating and have fun with it in my ebook i have given a detailed explanation on how to create a wireframe and i have used a real world example to demonstrate it be sure to check it out if you are interested if you enjoyed this video and want more practical ux ui tutorials then do consider subscribing thanks for watching